So if you're afraid of confrontation or you're afraid to look in uh, another person or another man's eyes on a job site and, and ask him to do something or to go back and fix something that needs to be fixed or to rip something out and redo it because it wasn't done properly or you, that seems like confrontation to you and you're having problems in your la landscaping business if, if you're in the first few years. Maybe you've been in the business for years and you just can't get the employee thing to work because you just don't know how to communicate and you think it's very confrontational or you're afraid someone will get mad at you or, or it's going to cause a fight or they're going to think you're a control freak. All these weird little issues are stuff that a lot of small business owners are afraid to talk about. And you look on social media and you see these guys that got these million dollar businesses and all these employees and you say, how do they do that? And how do you... And so uh, I want to talk about delegating in this video and the employee thing and how to delegate and communicate and I'll suggest some books for you to read as well you can listen to them while you're working and that will literally make you just quantum leap to the next level if you're receptive and open uh, why should you listen to me I'm Keith Kelfus I've been in business you know well, 10 years and I've uh, had all types of failures and I I've, I've was a landscaper my, my whole life and I worked for about 10 different landscaping companies including one of the biggest companies in the state of Michigan and I've been exposed to hundreds of different employees and workers on different levels. Uh, I had bosses who were like marine sergeants, I don't know anything about being in the marines but I've been exposed to very structured, organized work habits that have and I've been taught things about delegation by being a crew leader and running crews and being a foreman by the age of 18 you know pulling a truck and trailer and then working for companies and delegating work to anywhere from two to three to five to seven and up to ten guys on a job site and I've had to learn a lot of painful lessons uh, the first lesson to learn is whenever uh, the pressure is on if you put all that pressure on yourself and you keep pulling the work harder lever and you're picking up the slack for everybody else, you've got a long road ahead and you're going to dig yourself um, into a nervous breakdown or an early grave or something. And um, is it, uh, people will take advantage of that uh, and they will take advantage of you and do as little as possible if you aren't leading properly. Now. The second side of that, number two, is that people want to do a good job, they want to work hard, they want to take pride in their work, and they want to be delegated to and told what to do and handed the right proper tools and be taught how to do it properly, and they want to take charge of their job. So if you're three, a micromanaging control freak, and nobody can do anything right, and you're always riding everybody's ass, and you're there's all these different little hiccups you can run into that need to be ironed out, and uh, fixed and sometimes the only way to fix those is to go through them but you got to be aware of them so I'm going to suggest a couple books to you to read as well okay so if you're afraid to look in another man's eyes and ask him hey can you go over there and rake all that stuff and clean up put it in there then when you're done do this and then come back to me and let me know you know so I'll give you a scenario here let's say you've I don't know, sold a ten thousand dollar job you've got three guys working there's a lot of variables on this job maybe one guy's been with you a while, one guy's been with you a few months, one guy's brand new just started today. Okay, well first of all, you do the detailed property walk. This is how you delegate. And you say, hey, we do this, this is protocol. At the beginning of every job, we walk around the property, no matter how big, how small, and everybody's on the same page. You got a, you got, you know, you got your list. I use Jobber and I just put notes inside of it, what, the, what needs to be done in the work order and discuss it thoroughly with the guys and I send them a screenshot, like I text them so they can see everything that needs to be done on the job. We walk around the job very slowly. I say, relax, you don't have to do anything, just relax. We're gonna spend five to 15, even an hour on a, if it's a $20,000 job, we're probably gonna spend an hour walking around it and discussing every area of this job. Now, if you go talk to these guys that do these 50 and $100,000 jobs, they understand that a $50,000 job is just a bunch of little 5,000 or 10,000 or $1,000 jobs all grouped together into one big job. So if you break it apart, kind of like Henry Ford said, no job is too big to manage if you can't break it down into bite-sized chunks. You, you break those into zones or into quadrants or sections and you break them into um, a very pragmatic, practical, just pieces of a puzzle it's it, you make it very simplified and you walk around with your guys you say all right 
We're doing all the trees and bushes and shrubs on this property. We're demoing these garden beds. We're redoing everything with weed barrier fabric and pins and staples and putting in a retaining wall or whatever we're doing. Then we're backfilling with stone. We're doing this. These gutters, we're doing buried gutter downspouts. We're busting up this concrete driveway. Blah, 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 blah. This job is going to take us six days. Um, if it goes over seven days, we got a problem. If we get it done in five days everybody gets a $500 bonus I have no idea like you, you just you, you can say uh, time right so you want to let it's like who what when where why now you do the detailed property walk with everybody and you discuss each quadrant any questions and then sometimes there might be a guy that's joking around or not paying attention and you just stop and wait for him to quit joking around or if he thinks he knows everything and he wants to just get on to the job and get working. I used to have a guy that works for me, that worked for me. <sighs> I had to let him go. And I hired him back and let him go, hired him back, let him go for <laughs> You've been there, right? We would do, be doing the property walk. And right in, halfway through the thing, he, all right, let's get this shit done. And he would just walk off in the middle of us walking. And I got to the point where I, I was like, you know what? I'm so sick of trying to run off and catch this guy like a wild horse running off i'm just gonna let he, he thinks he knows what to do let it he just wants to grab the shrub trimmers and start trimming all the shrubs that's what he's gonna do it was too disruptive for me to deal with it anymore so then halfway through the job he didn't know what the hell to do and he's frustrated and i say to him, hey if you would have stuck around during the property walk for 15 minutes then you would have known exactly what to do right but um anyways so sometimes the wrong people on the bus are just the wrong people no matter how hard you try try and people can change and they do right but or some people might be going through a season if you have employees or people on your crew or subcontractors that are just going through something then maybe they'll get through it but the right people on the bus well they're the right people and when the right people you can teach the right person any skill or any trick of the trade or anything but if it's the wrong guy it's hard to teach him anything he's just the wrong guy right so remember that that's like number four right but all right so back to what i was saying you do the detailed property walk and you get this down pat and everybody's all right everybody's on the same page you know that if, if you have any questions if you forget anything let me know but let's break this down into sections so here's where you actually do the delegation you got your guy that's been with you forever all right guy you've been with me forever um everybody get to work at unloading the tools getting everything set up uh, I'll go get materials or I'll send this guy to get materials. Uh, you start breaking that thing up. You start trimming all this. You want to take your brand new guys. So you get your guys that are experienced and have them start doing something right away. You know, they already know how to do it because they've been doing it for months or for years. You take your brand new guy and you make him feel uh, like you care about him. You're coaching him, right? You know, it's called delegation by abdication is what you don't want to do. It's like you just send him off to do something. He doesn't know how to start the machine. He doesn't know how to use it. He doesn't know what he's doing. Therefore, he's not confident and now he's scared and he thinks he's gonna mess up. That's bullshit. You shouldn't treat somebody like that. Would you wanna be treated that way? You say, all right, new guy, Chris. We'll call a new guy, Chris. Chris, come over here with me. Fist bump, how you doing this morning? What's up? All right, cool. I know that it might seem a little bit overwhelming. We're doing this job, it's like 20 grand, but I'm gonna get you over here and get you started on this. So don't worry about all that other stuff for now. We're just gonna do little things. So you give him a task. Hey, I want you to dig up this whole area and I'm gonna teach you about a 410 pitch. You see how this is like this? I want you to dig all this, wheelbarrow it to the dump trailer. And this area, this you know, 10 by 10 square foot section, I want you to dig all this up and teach him all the safety stuff, give him the tools, and then tell him about how long it should take, right? So this should take you about an hour to an hour and a half to do all this. If it takes more than an hour and a half, we got a problem. We got to fix something. You're doing something too slow or you're not doing it right. Uh, if you get it done way too fast, then you've probably skipped a step. So it'll take you about an hour. And But don't just leave them. This is the training part. You say, just chill for a second and watch me do the thing. All right. This is, a, if it's the first time he's trimming shrubs, for instance, this is a safety lesson on how you do shrub trimmers. Give him his safety glasses, his earmuffs, his gloves, 
make him sign a form or have him sign a form that says he has received his safety equipment from you and he signed off and then you file that away in his employee file and you give him the, the protection he needs and then you teach him about how to start shrub trimmers um, and then how to not cut your hands, how to be safe, how to make sure your thumb is over the grip instead of on top of it. Go around if you're, if you're trimming shrubs near bricks a brick house stay away from the bricks because if you touch the bricks it'll make the shrub trimmers kick back and possibly your hand will slip off and cut your hand and tell a story i worked with a guy once who blah blah, blah and he cut his hand open and had to go to the clinic luckily it didn't hit a tendon but if you do that it will cut you open like a fish and you'll be bleeding all over the place have you ever cut yourself really bad yeah it sucks this is a horrible thing you don't ever want this to happen so you want to be safe always be mindful of this and this and this and you go through this whole thing with them while your other guys are working and then you say just chill and watch me so it's like number five it's like you have him watch you do the thing you trim the shrubs or dig the thing or pressure wash or whatever it is and do it for a few minutes and get the first shrub done and get it all perfect and be like okay this is a boxwood shrub or this is a you know it's not one of those shrubs. So that which is similar is not the same, and that which is the same is not similar. Therefore, if it were this similar, it wouldn't be the same. Like you say, just because I trim this one this way doesn't mean that other one over there gets trimmed that way. So don't automatically assume that it just because I'm doing this here, it gets done like that everywhere. It's a different case with everything. Just this specified by the client, or this is like this, and I want you to do all of them the same way. Now that I just trimmed this one, and I made it look exactly how I want, and I shook off the trimmings and and then we put a tarp down we clean it up and I boom you got that okay you do it in front of him and then now you you have him do it you're you're spending you're sitting with this dude for a half an hour so now he starts the shrub trimmers and, he, and he's trimming the thing or he's digging the thing or pressure washing your other guys are still working you gave them tasks to do they're fine you're working with the new guy and um, you have him do the thing and you stay by him coach him and then when he's done you say all right that was pretty good you could have done a little bit better uh over here i really like the way that you did this take a little bit more time and tune that thing up and make that thing better uh or and then let him let him keep going it's and, and you know what? go take a phone call walk around do something say hey i'll give you a few minutes and do do the next three or four of these it's okay you're not going to mess anything up simple stuff even if you do no big deal it's going to be fine do this thing for, for 5, 10, 15 minutes and get the hang of it. Don't like hover over him and make him nervous. Walk around, come back, check on him. And then once he feels like he's got it, once you say, once you feel like you got it, wave me over. I'm going to come back and then we'll go to the next step. Okay. So number six, now he teaches you how to do the thing. This changed everything for me. Trust me. I was pulling my hair out when I learned this, this change. I can literally hire an employee and get them up to speed two weeks. I, I've literally taught a guy how to pressure wash the whole outside of, of a house, how to clean windows, how to do landscaping, decorative stone, mulch, trim shrubs. Very quickly I can get guys up to speed and get them conscious and competent so they're aware of what they're doing and doing a good job so I can literally just walk away and they got it for the most part. And I was never able to do that before because I didn't understand this. So number six is he, he now teaches you how to do the thing. Say so now that you've got it, I want you to teach me everything. Remember, pretend like I'm a brand new guy and I want you to teach me how to do the thing. So literally walk me through the whole process and you just relax, right? Now you might have your other employees coming up to you asking questions, your phone's ringing, the customer's coming out, the neighbors, this is a real business. Like you, you're you not just sitting there like in La La Land in the side of a bubble in some different quantum paradigm. You're literally in real time and the clock's ticking. You got shit all over you and you gotta take care of and handle. You gotta had to call the insurance company. You're supposed to be on a webinar at 1.30. You got your wife calling you because something going on at home. Then now someone you love, their car just broke down. All so much shit is going on. You have to divorce yourself from all that chaos and just focus on that new guy. Because if you don't, it's like you're spinning tops. You got your head on a swivel looking at your other guys. If you see something go on that you got a nip in the bud, you better go run over there quick. Hey, hey, stop. Why are you using that machine without your safety glasses? Here. Take, take them off your own head and give them to them or say, get safety glasses. They're in the truck, just like, you know, put, all right, and come back. Like sometimes you have to 
stop or intervene. You have to like, the moment will inform you what's required when you're present. The moment informs you what's required. Moment by moment, it's a moment by moment dance, right? And if you're in fear and anxiety and trauma and stuck in your head, then you can't calibrate properly. All right. So number six is he teaches you how to do, okay, this is how I start it, make sure I'm safe, this is that. He trims it, he does the whole thing. And then he does a good job. You're like, wow, you actually taught me how to do that. And we've only been doing this 20 minutes. Good job. Now here's step seven. He teaches the other guy how to do the thing. So we're going to call Joe. Hey, Joe. Joe already knows the drill. Hey, Joe, put down the wand or whatever you're doing over there. Come over here. Put down the shovel. Um, the new guy, Chris, is getting the hang of this. He got it down really good. He just taught me how to do it. Now he's going to teach you how to do it, right? and I'm gonna stand and observe him teaching. So now something about this, this is a triggers an accountability. The best way to learn something is to actually to teach it. There's something that there's an accountability switch that flips in the head when you're teaching something. So now teach Joe, Joe already knows how to do this shit, but he, and he knows that. Teach Joe how to do it. And then you, we, the very act of you observing makes it have, so you sit there and just chill and watch him teach Joe everything he learned. And Joe's listening, okay, yeah, yeah, cool. And and then, boom, he's got it. And then you say, all right, go ahead, and I want you to trim these next 10 or this 100 square feet. Dig this thing out or do this thing. If you have any questions, come get me or come ask Joe or whatever. And then when you're done, don't go on to the next thing. Stop and come find me. This should take you about an hour, right? All right, good. If you need gas, it's over there, this, that. Lunch, whatever, boom. Okay, so he's got it down. Now, he's good. You can literally bounce and take care of all the jobs, your phone calls, everything else you need to do. And then when he's done, you give him another task. And then another task. And you can't give him little tiny tasks. If you got like three brand new guys, you're gonna have to give him little tasks, like spinning little tops. And then you go to work on what you gotta do, whether you're freaking, it looked like I was eating a steak. <laughs> no, no, because <laughs> I wouldn't like that. But I mean, like if you're like, wiring something or fixing a sprinkler you're working your head's on a swivel you're looking at the other guys the more experienced the guy is the more that you can leave him alone the more uh leader he is the more if, if he's going to be a foreman you can just leave him alone some employees or crew members team members do not like to be micromanaged at all um am i a micromanager less and less over time but what i mean is at some point you just got to leave them the hell alone and so the more experienced they are is the more multiple tests like like my guys i literally do the job site property detail walk i, I draw out the zones of everything that needs to get done and i don't really have to say anything they just go to work and well, like one guy that works he does he likes to work by himself he doesn't like to work like because at, at bigger companies you're taught like you got to work side by side with guys and they work in like a little small army of bees and then they get everything done 100 percent to completion as they move so they're never backtracking and going over anything twice and missing steps like it's it's a very uncomfortable thing to have to be yoked up with other guys because you feel like you're trapped it doesn't feel like a chain gang or something i don't I, i've never like there's a and I had to get used to that form of work. So when I started my own business and started having hiring employees and growing a crew, um, I like, if they wanna be spread out and they don't wanna to work together, if they like to be left alone, whatever, I don't care as long as the work gets done. And so um, one guy who works for me is very tedious and he's very good at doing little tiny micro stuff, really detail oriented and good. And uh, another guy is, can just jump in and it's very mechanically inclined but uh you're always gonna have i, don't, I wouldn't say always but usually have someone working for you that here's the hard part like they might be good at one thing or two things but they suck at everything else and they don't want to do anything, everything else and they hate everything else they're like a one trick pony those are it's hard working with people like that because they're very resistant and they'll sometimes intentionally do a bad job at something that they don't want to do 
and no matter how hard you try, you're just never going to win with them. So if you do enough of that service to keep them around, I think it's worth it if they're really good at one thing. But sometimes having someone that's more diversified is better. And then you should question how many different services are you offering. If you're offering five different or ten different services, no wonder your guys hate doing sprinklers when you normally just cut grass. Or they hate doing landscaping installs when they just cut grass or vice versa. No wonder they suck at putting a patio in or doing hardscaping if you normally just do softscaping and cut grass. You can't expect them to, because they don't do it every day. So, all right, so I said seven steps. Step eight was um, him teaching the other guy how to do it. Yeah, that was step, was that step eight? And then, uh, no, that was step seven. So there you go. If you have any questions, let me know below. I'll make more videos. I know it's just me sitting in a truck here talking. There's so many different things I, I want to address, but I understand on YouTube, you got to be entertaining and blah, blah, and all this stuff. And all this stuff is not getting addressed. And I, it's like people don't even watch these type of videos. They literally just want to watch entertaining stuff. And I think that just investing 20 minutes into a video talking and ironing these things out. Oh yeah. The next thing I wanted to say is the books. Um, uh, Go on audible.com and get the book Crucial Conversations and the other book Difficult Conversations. When you listen to those two books, they'll help you tremendously. I've been, uh, I used to suck at having difficult conversations. Now I understand that if you don't have that uncomfortable conversation, there's a saying uh, where you'll be in five years is directly to pro proportional to uh, the people you associate yourself with, the books that you read, and the uncomfortable conversations you are willing to have so now when I have to have a difficult conversation uh, I don't let it go by more than 24 hours and for, mo for the most part I'm, I'm gonna talk about it and because if you don't 